Hey YouTube, this is Teddy once again. Um, I'm sorry I'm late with the video. I was just too busy over the weekend, but hopefully I'll get it up right now. Today's Thursday. I might get it up either Thursday or Wednesday. But uh, yeah, so this is not a continuation of the cage building videos. It is actually just how to set up just a small snake tub or hatching tub or whatever. Um, you know, if you're bringing home a snake, it's just probably the easiest setup to do. Um, Alright, so this is obviously our tub. We have our lid here beside it. We have our heat mat here. We have whatever decoration you want over there. Time to here, we'll get to that in a bit. Now, the first thing is our tub. Uh, you want to make sure it's big enough for the snake to comfortably fit in, but not too big. I recommend that if it's the biggest the tub should be in the ratio to the snake is that the length of the snake uh, should be the length of the tub. That is the maximum size tub I would recommend, unless you're going to clutter it up with hides and stuff. So, here we have our heat mat then to cover between a third and a half of the tub. And see there, it works just about fine. And this is the end of the car heat mat then. You cannot plug this straight into the wall. The reason for that being is that the heat mat could overheat and burn the belly of your snake if the snake is lying on top of it. Uh, it happened to a friend of mine where it was too cold and his snake went right into the heat mat. The heat mat was inside the cage, it was unstatted and the snake got severe burns on its belly and will most likely be scarred forever. So, you know, he, he learned the hard way. Uh, an expensive vet bill, his snake paid the price with a lot of pain. And, you know, for the sake of a couple quid for a guard, for another guard, but uh, a thermostat, it's, it's a lot easier. I know another guy whose snake died actually because of it, so, you know, for the sake of this, ther this thermostat cost me 30 euros at a pet shop and it would most likely have been even cheaper, like 15, 20 maybe even 12 on eBay so there's no excuse really if you can afford a snake you can afford to keep it safe so anyway so you have three strands coming out of the thermostat one of them is this so you plug your heat mat into that then this is the plug from the thermostat you turn it into the wall and this is the most important bit right here this is the probe you put that into your tub like this make sure this hole here and you put it here and this is where the snake will be resting. Then you and you calibrate your thermostat. You put it here. You can set it to whatever. Let me just focus in. See that? See all the different uh, settings there for thing for the temperature. And then you check it with a temperature gun to make sure that. You have indeed set it at that thermostat. You, know, you might set it at 35 and this only reaches 33. You might set it at 29 and it gets as high as 31. So you know you you, you allow for whatever if it gets if it's uh, off by a couple of degrees you just allow for that. So there's a substrate. You can have aspen chips. You can have beach chips. You can have newspaper, paper towels, whatever. Uh, the things I would say away from are pine and cedar chips because they are toxic to uh, reptiles and you just need to die. And the other thing I would stay away from is gravel because it's not absorbent and it can, you know, it can it's, it's not a nice thing for your snake to be sitting on and it can get cold sand is something else I would stay away from and personally I would stay away from the chippings as well simply because uh, aspen chippings they're, they're, there's been speculation that they have a help in a respiratory infection and they can stick to food and whatnot when a snake is shedding I saw I seen a snake um, it wasn't even eating, it swallowed aspen chippings trying to rub itself off them to shed its skin. It got, it, got them stuck in its mouth. And I've seen another you know, I've seen another snake with its gums swollen from uh, aspen chippings getting large in its gums. So that's why I don't like them. I personally just use newspaper. It's great, it's cheap to buy, it's hygienic. You can see if your snake has a, a, bad, a bad looking stool. Uh, you can definitely be assured that the snake isn't going to swallow any of it with its food and won't get impacted. You can see mites and other parasites if they happen. If you happen to have them very quickly on them. It's a, it's, it's an amazing thing. The only the only downside to it is it doesn't look nice. And frankly, that's not something that concerns me too much. Also, high humidity. It's better to use a, um, a substrate that's more resistant to high humidity. If you're keeping very snakes that love their things like you know, green tree pythons would be maybe an exception to the rule. So anyway. So we get, we say we're going to use newspaper for this. So you get a sheet of newspaper. Right. You put that there. Now obviously that's not neat, but you know. So, then you have your water dish. 
So you can go with a natural looking resin water dish. Or you can go with a kind of more clinical looking steel water dish. You can use plastic water dishes. Like I have in there. Or even like this, like dog water I like this style because they're very hard to tip over. A ceramic water dish. Um, there's a lot of different things you can use them. Uh, personally, again, I will go with the more hygienic option of the steel or plastic rather than the resin looking one. It's cheaper, but it's also much easier to clean. If you look in at all the little cracks and stuff there, that's, that's, that, that's a bitch to clean. It actually is. That was the first water dish I got for my first snakes, and I haven't used it in about two years. Um, just because plastic is so much easier to clean and so is metal and you know you need you need like boiling water and stuff to clean out that whereas like you can just wipe the other one down there's no cracks and crevices for it to hide in for like bacteria and stuff together in. so we'll say we go for whichever one we go for this one so that's there so then we need a place for a snake to hide so again we can have I use little resin caves because they're not they're they're easier to clean than the resin dishes so I can use those you can use um cardboard boxes you can use lots of things and for some snakes like you see the abaya burmese there she doesn't have a hide because her cage her she is big enough in her cage that she doesn't need one when she moves up into a four foot viv quite soon she i will put a hide into that cage for her i'll use a probably a cereal box because she will be smaller in relation to her enclosure than she is now so she's more likely to get a slightly scared or stressed or whatever about it so that's why she is a hide. that's why she will get a hide and it's the same with the female bow over here, does not have a hide because she's big enough in her cage. The albino lab does have a hide because she's very small. The boa constrictor here has a hide over here because this cage is a lot bigger in relation to it. So, you know. So, you can say you get a hide. Or you can get uh, leaves and stuff and put that there and snake and hide in those. You can put a branch into the cage if you want. So, yeah, you can do all that. So, take that out. Now we just now you make sure that your probe is not going to get battered on by snake. The best thing is to do with tape on the outside to stop it being pulled or pushed and like that. That'll afford you a lot of uh, control. And maybe even use a uh, tie wraps to secure it to a branch or whatever. Uh, put it in like the basking spot that the snake, that the hottest point that's going to get in the cage, and set it to the highest. Uh, range in your snake's temperature. So if you put it on the highest, the place that's going to get the hottest in the cage, and set it to get to 32, 33 degrees, which is the the optimum uh, higher end of the temperature range for most snakes, that'd be perfect. A little higher for desert species, a little lower for more temperate species like garter snakes. But so, we'll put our lid on. Make sure you have ventilation holes. It's better if you have holes in the top of the cage here and then in the bottom of the cage here is a few holes in the top of the cage at the warm end and at the bottom of the cage in the cold end the warm air rising it'll rise out of here suck in air here and you get, you're creating a little bit of airflow there that's good for the snake so that is our basic snake cage you can do the same thing with that extra terror there be quite easy just let me walk around to it so you can do the same thing there you can put whatever substrate you want there uh, you have a bit more height to play with in these, so you know you might want to add more branches and stuff. And because you've meshed there, you have uh, you can use a, uh, a light, like a ceramic bulb. I will show you one of those next. This is a bulb holder. It's, get, it's quite hot, so... That's a black ceramic bulb inside in it. And you can use that on this these mesh tops. Uh, you can't really use them with tubs. What you can do, however, is you can cut. You can cut a little hole in the tub. And get a hot glue gun, glue mesh onto it, and then you can use a bulb in these type of tubs. They're they're better for the taller style tubs. So that's your basic snake cage. It's a basic snake tub. It's good, you know, if anyone's getting their first snake and they're saying, "Oh, I don't want to spend," if you're seeing, you know, the variance for sixty to hundred euro in shops, saying, "Oh, all this set is to be too expensive." It won't be this tub. You can get that for about ten euros. You can get the thermostats for fifteen, twenty euros online. You can get the heat mats. You can get it for twenty euros in a pet shop, or you can get them even cheaper online again. You can get them like five, ten euros online. Water dishes there. You can get a. You don't need to get like a resin water dish. You can get a resin water dish for eight euro, which would be hard to clean out. Or you can get like a dog or cat food dish. These are these were one euro sixty in a shop, and I got slightly bigger ones for like three euros. So those are, in my opinion, much better. Um. 
hide, hide, hiding places, you can get cardboard hides, you can get plastic hides. The snake really doesn't care what its cage looks like as long as it has, as long as it's, you know, as, as long as it's sheltered, as long for you, as long as it can't escape, as long as it's hygienic for the snake, as long as the snake has uh, access to fresh water. It, if it's a uh, nervous species or it's a small snake in a larger cage, it has a place to hide. That's uh, also important for it. And you know, obviously, as long as you give it a, as long as you, you keep the cage clean, and your snake will have a happy life. But um, that's the most important thing. It's more important that the snake has a good life rather than you like the look of the cage. So, um, it's very easy to set up a nice looking cage, and then because it's so hard to clean, you have to clean out all the different things. It's very hard to. It's very easy to then. You know, neglect things slightly and let bacteria grow and then you then if your snake gets hurt so there's a bigger chance of infection it's much easier to do this like newspaper can be cleaned out every day whereas if you wood chippings you're more likely just to spot clean the individual parts where you see a bit of poop or whatever and then just leave the rest and then bacteria from poop soaks down and, you know can contaminate the rest of it so it's much easier just to newspaper in and out done job done so uh, that is my just my basic uh, cage tip there. I want to say a shout out to Mr. Woelk. He has a I I don't know how to pronounce that. I'll uh, put a link in the description anyway. He's a uh, lots of nice snakes and uh, very nice tegu as well. So shout out to him. And I am done.